The data group system is a very sophisticated system, and it's really at the core of the IM in Bentley's approach to building information modeling. Okay. And it's about understanding, or today's presentation is about understanding how to get the best out of the data group system. And it, whilst, you know, just an hour is, is quite a brief time to go through quite a comprehensive system and a, a detailed system, what I'm trying to get across this afternoon are some key aspects or pieces of information that will help you, you know, move towards a well-formed strategy to manage the data group system and then help make sure that you're meeting your project requirements, that you've got, you know, you can gain valuable insight beyond understanding the geometry that's going on, and then help control some of your deliverables, perhaps such as IFCs. So I'm going to be talking a lot about lots of different aspects of Open Buildings Designer and the relationship or the impact that the data group system is going to have on that. So moving on slightly, I just want to sort of start with some basics information, then talk about the data group system, and then some exploits that we can do for once we've got the data group system up and running for us, if you like. As you know, Open Buildings Designer is a comprehensive modeling engine. Not only can it do object modeling associated with you know the normal BIM production tools that we're all used to these days. It has you know general modeling capabilities, you know, be it surfaces or solids, you know, some freeform modeling. But we also have the ability to drive both of these kinds of modeling with computational modeling as well and approach there. The way that you choose to model impacts the effectiveness of the data group system, or it impacts the way that you might use or exploit the data group system. So I want to talk about a few examples about that. What do I mean? Well, your choice of geometry sort of governs the kind of information and feedback that you get from open buildings design. So I've got some illustrated examples, but if you think about the traditional dumb geometry modeling that you might be familiar with most CAD packages. You know, you can draw something that represents a wall or a slab, but in doing that, you know, the reporting capabilities are basic. You may not get material information or classification account. That. Anything that you have to do like that might be manual. Then what we can do is there is the opportunity to add some data group information parameters, okay, or attributes, whichever term you want to use, to these objects. And these might give you the ability to start looking at things like reporting. So they, these attributes or parameters may not necessarily drive the graphics, but they might give you basic reporting of information, you know, like quantities, or it might be able to get counts out of it or things like that okay and like i said we've got um, a graphical illustrations going along with this and then thirdly there is using what we might call a native open buildings object you know a door a wall a beam a column etc there we get the full benefit of the link um within open buildings designer we do have generic form modeling. Now, this is slightly different from example one because we do get some graphical intelligence. We do get some quantification capabilities that we don't have in example one. So there is a slight difference between example one and example three. And then lastly, example four is where we're using those full native object definitions where we've got walls, doors, beams, walls. They have you know, attributes on them, and there is some bi-directional linking between that. So let's just have a quick look at some graphics. So it's very easy for me, you know, example one, to draw a solid that looks basically like a wall. 
Okay. But when we query that, we might get some basic information on there, but we've got no information about the material, the fire rating, those kinds of things. And, you know, when I section this object, I may not understand what material it is it brickwork, blockwork, concrete, etc. You know, those kind of things. And but there's no relationship between other objects. So if I join this to another wall, there's no intelligence between those two objects. So there's a lot of manual editing. What we can then do is we can take that object and then add data group properties, the data group system, that schema of properties that we're going to talk about more. We can actually apply those to that dumb solid. And embedded in there, what we'll then get is we'll perhaps change the representation of the object to show it's actually a brick construction or a concrete construction. We might get some visual capabilities out of there. We're seeing improved quantification out of this. But again, we're still limited in terms of the relationships or interactions with other elements inside of the model. What we can then do is then look at the forms model, you know, the open buildings forms modeling, that slight difference between, you know, example one and example three, where we do get detailed areas, we get lengths, we get surface areas, that kind of thing. We do get some parametric control, but we do also, we do get some relationships between other elements. So, for instance, if I, again, if I join walls, if I move one wall, another wall might react to that movement, that kind of relationship. So that's where we get that step up in intelligence. And obviously, if the wall is being modified, obviously, we get the updated quantities as well. And lastly, if we actually move to that native open buildings element, it comes with the data group system already applied to it. And there, what we get is the ability, like I said, to see information. We've got the attributes that we can report on. We get the quantities, but we also get those relationships as well. So it becomes a very rich experience. And I want to talk about how we might control that data group system and that rich experience to sort of maximize the return on our investment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.